welcome everybody back to the uh, weekly appointment with the Week in Italian Startups, where uh, myself and Nicolò, we go through the main uh, news of the past week, uh, get, get some comment and all of that in uh, about 30 minutes or less. Uh, we're live on YouTube and Clubhouse and all the session will be available on Spotify for people that uh, are missing it. And uh, yeah, we'll open at the end to the Q&A, so stay, stick until the end and then we can uh, discuss uh, maybe some of the, uh, uh, the news, the latest, so that we can, uh, we can have a nice discussion. So, right. let, me, let, me remind, let, me, let me remind everybody that this is based out of the, the Week in Italian Startups newsletter which is our starting point for discussion for the week. Exactly, and uh, the website to uh, subscribe for the full newsletter is going to be uh, dealflowit.it uh, slash Nicolas right? Uh, no, not really. Uh... Okay, <laughs> which one is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's dilflowit.nicolasomarico.com. Uh, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's get started. Yeah. No. Exactly. So let me. I'll uh, also pull up some uh, some interesting uh, elements. Uh, let me to write. Right. Yeah. Where do you want to start, Jack? So uh, we have, uh, let's start from the rock stars, actually. I would, uh, the first thing that came into my mind was a Satis Bay acquisition of, uh, of the service, the uh, advisory, it, advisory. It. So I think that's, uh, I mean, Satis Bay has been a big player, especially last year. Uh, I think it's been like very uh, active. They've been playing their own cards really, really well. Um, founder is, is insanely good and he's been like a really working hard so this is the first uh, acquisition of the group now the company i think the last valuation was about 248 uh, million uh, given the last round of 93 million and so they're really like going after it hard uh, and this is their first uh, acquisition in the space so i would love to talk about more about this <laughs> well, uh, you said it all. Uh, this is the first um, acquisition they announced, and uh, they went for a welfare startup in the rest restaurant sector, uh, which is interesting. Um, I don't know the size of advisory. It's mm -hmm. may maybe it's more than of a, a acquire hire. We don't know, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, basically, what uh, what the startup does is. Um, they aggregate restaurants on their platforms, on their platform, and uh, they allow, uh, they offer discounts to the uh, affiliate companies, managers. Uh, the, the way I understand it. So it's it's uh, an interesting choice as a first acquisition by this I would say. But probably it is a good way to leverage their network. Uh, they probably have quite a, quite a big network of restaurants. Uh, affiliated so yeah so apparently advisory has about 800 restaurants uh, all over italy with about 16,000 uh, subscribers which uh, on absolute term is not huge but uh, the fact that it's corporate the corporate angle where you can actually gain points if you're part of a corporate that uh, uh, subscribes to the service and then you can go back that really generates a really good like a uh, uh, positive cycle I believe. so that's probably what is a very very attractive so it's um, essentially like very well qualified subscriber. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was my my take on it. Oh, but yep. good job, good job to the team of Satispay. Really, and we're gonna see something very interesting for sure. Awesome. So secondly, the other big rock star again, Tanniko is uh, is in the is in the news. Where actually, with a twist of a plot, we have uh, LVHM and the Campari Group essentially partnering up to dominate the scene in the e-commerce of wine and spirits. So I thought it was a very, very interesting move. 
because uh, because yeah, they're this is a great example of how a huge, how huge corporations are coming together to actually leverage both their network and the current technology to to dominate a space. Dominate the space. They might not they necessarily might be necessarily specifically expert upon. So that's uh, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, uh, Tanico has a big news every quarter, more or less. Yeah. <laughs> Funding and partial exit and uh, growth, and now uh, being at the core of this joint venture. Yeah. Uh, and let's not forget the acquisition of the French competitor. So yes. Uh, yes. it's for sure becoming an international player and mm -hmm. very happy about it. Uh, so looking forward to their next moves. No, for sure. So yeah, the, the French uh, competitor, I think, also has a has an interesting and very interesting angle. It's very very uh, sort of luxury wine, French wine. So it's a very very good way of uh, of enlarging the, the business. And for sure, with the, the push both from Campari Group and LVHM, that's definitely going to play uh, in in their favor. So definitely very interesting uh, uh, way of handling the expansion of the business. So. Awesome. Oh, awesome. <laughs> From the news article, I remember that the uh, um, the, the Campari side of the joint venture was basically uh, just Tannico, and it was valued like something like thirty million dollars. No, oh. not not bad. How much I was the How much was the entry ticket for Tannico? I don't remember the entry ticket for Campari and the purchase of Tannico because they acquired the majority, right? If not the, the no, 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 no. They I think they acquired forty nine percent, not okay. not the control. I'm not not sure though. Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. And we should dig, dig up the uh, the story. Interesting. That would be cool. That would be cool if the founder kept like a good, uh, a good, uh, a good stake, and then like with this huge player coming in, that's definitely like a, a huge, huge boost for them. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Let's move on. Staying on the food, maybe. Uh, so it right closing around the five million to develop essentially like healthy uh, food shops called the Herbert. Um, from my knowledge, there is a pilot already in Milan where essentially they sell like the healthiest food possible. And uh, the real angle here is to get uh, healthy food at the right price. So we also have a, a, a nice sort of, uh, let's do this right ethically in a good way, not just luxury foods, but ethically sourced with an ethical sort of like angle. And I thought it was very interesting. So the plan is really to expand uh, this new uh, concept of uh, uh, eating right, if you will, and eating ethical, maybe. So I was uh, I was very curious. Also because the lead investor here is Ultra Venture, which has been one of the biggest and oldest player in the impact investing space in Italy. So that's definitely like a, a big movement also here. Yeah, actually, uh, the interesting side of the news is that it's right is actually something like uh, is generated within Ultra Venture, so it's oh, wow. more like a venture factory, venture factory. Let's say so. Interesting. Uh, yeah, they, they launched originally the the venture with the founder, yeah. and they hold the majority. If you if you read the news, the majority of the company. Uh, and they're continuing to invest in it. So this is interesting. Yeah. So uh, I was also checking the portfolio of Ultra Venture, especially the, the Fund 2. That's, they, I mean, they definitely had a huge jump between Ultra 1 and Ultra 2, where Ultra 2 is really, you know, investing in some big player like Sfera Agricola, uh, Airbird, of course, uh, a bunch of different like, other, 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 really know, like, uh, really know, like, the space. So, a very good improvement for them, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. All right. Moving fast. Uh, your newsletter this week was like, filled with stuff. It was, it was a very active and a very active week. So, I'm just making a selection and then eventually yeah, we've we got. <laughs> I got a friend who didn't lose time in pointing out that I missed actually a round. Uh, oh, interesting. Round. That would be cool. That would be very cool. It was undisclosed. So <laughs> I will, I will, the, the, the amount was undisclosed. So the, 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 the round was disclosed, but the amount was undisclosed. So um, not too much uh, to see there, but still. 
Nice, nice. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah I, one, I, I'm being monitored. Nice. No, that's that's good. Uh, one uh, transaction that I thought was interesting was uh, Jellyfy with Azimut Digitech Fund to invest in Arebo. So uh, here again it is uh, sort of another example of how like uh, a lot of companies and wealth managers are trying to uh, push a very sustainable product. So it's a very trend that is right now really much established. And, uh, and yeah, it's a nice idea. The, the, the bottling sort of problem together with the plastic. So the Rebo bottle sort of plays in that field. Uh, I know I know personally of a company working in the water space, uh, be making it sustainable and making it like plastic free. And I think that's also another, another good way of doing it. I'm not too sure if that's the right way to do it because apparently every time you drink your up tracks the way you drink and how much you drink and calculates, uh, you know, how much plastic you saved. But uh, but it's definitely something uh, like an, a nice conception. A nice conception. So keep an eye. Yeah, on well, it. if you think about it, it was only a matter of time uh, with all the uh, the, the bottles uh, uh, that came out in the last few years, the dumb ones, I would say. The smart one was only a matter of time. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, you know, apparently this one, uh, there, is, there, there is money and undisclosed amount again, mm -hmm. which I always wonder uh, uh, and what, how much are we talking about, but still, awesome. uh, all the best to them as well, because, you know, let's save the planet. Ah, for, sure, for sure, for sure. For great, sure. great cause, for sure, I understand. All right, changing completely uh, topic. And let's talk about the theory, actually, like uh, basically what has happened with superfluid. So again, here is an example of an Italian founder, if I'm not mistaken, moving to the UK for a definitely a better ecosystem in the, in the crypto space and coming up with this great idea of making uh, money transfer a, as quick and as streamed as possible. So I'm not an expert. I know you, you have more knowledge on this space. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm curious about your, your take on this. Oh, well, um, I, I don't know whether you, you read the website of Superflow, you visit them, but uh, there it is fascinating. It's mm -hmm. like programmable cash flows. Mm -hmm. After the programmable money, you are in the programmable cash flows uh, world, probably. So it's, I, I'm extremely fascinated about what they're doing. Uh, the, the, the idea is that you can, you know, uh, create a conti continuous stream of money uh, between agents, mm -hmm. uh, automatic or, or else. Uh, like uh, if you think about, you know, I don't know, uh, paying for a service, mm -hmm. instead of paying it in installments, you can really pay as you go by the second, which is, you know, game changing in a sense. So I'm trying to imagine a, a world where things are paid by the second. This is going to be something very, very interesting. So basically, it's really exploding payments into micro installment to make it as precise and affordable as possible. I don't know whether affordable is the right term, but right. it's about continuous transferring mm -hmm. money. So tiny, tiny, tiny amounts, but uh, constantly. So it's, you know, very, very interesting. Awesome. Fantastic. Awesome. Fantastic. Right. Uh, this is very international, international uh, fundraiser. I think that probably many of the uh, important names in the crypto space invested in the in the company from Multicoin Capital. Ah, okay, I don't know. I don't know much about Multicoin Capital. If you do, you know any anything more about it? But the, uh, they, they've been one of the in, in, very first players investing in the, in the crypto space. Uh, and they have uh, taken quite uh, many visible positions. Yeah. Uh, they, I like them because they have a strong thesis. They always publish uh, a, a long description of the reason why invested in something, mm -hmm. which very I find cool. it quite, quite good, very, very interesting. Very cool. Uh, so I follow them and, uh, and I quite like them. So I'm very happy that they had this round in, in Superfluid. Fantastic. Fantastic. 
Excellent. So staying on the uh, sort of payment slash fintech space, let's talk about what is happening with the traditional banking sector in Italy with Banca Vassabina that I didn't know and I recently understood it was a, it's a big player in, in digital. So uh, they've been, uh, they've been uh, basically uh, doing a, a one, uh, one operation with Cardo AI. And then last week they uh, acquired a good percentage, 8.3% of Borsa del Credito, which essentially provides a very quick 24 hour loan for businesses. So a, a great example on how to uh, innovate within the banking sector by acquisition. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I have to confess I didn't know them either. Mm -hmm. uh, I found out about Bank of Sabina back in May when they announced the investment into Cardo AI, mm -hmm. and it seems they are, you know, setting up setting up a, a, a pattern here in investing and taking positions in, in innovative companies. So, uh, looking forward to seeing what they are up to. Yeah, fantastic. And I think it's a pretty local bank. That's what is interesting. It's not like a big banking group. is is very old. But it def it's definitely like very much localized around uh, Brescia and uh, and uh, the northern Italy space. So uh, I was very very excited to see like uh, maybe it's like huge and maybe definitely can manage like a huge amount of money. But what it was uh, very curious is that it's absolutely localized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, again, I don't know much about the bank. Maybe we can uh, <laughs> we can make a deep dive session yeah, yeah. in the future. Yeah. Still. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, it's quite interesting that such a local player is taking these type of positions. So, yeah, beautiful, really nice. All right. Uh, other big moves that uh, caught my attention was the uh, CDP move to found to actually uh, enlarge their big collection of uh, accelerators around Italy. So I was uh, researching how much do they have. Uh, so they started with the Sport Ed. The, sorry, the Sport Up. We Sport Up. And then they moved to the zero for the clean tech, and then the motor valley, and then with the one we talked about already, which is the cyber accelerator. And now is is the time for uh, edutech in general. So that's a very interesting announcement where they're basically allocating money for the next three years to actually push out about 10 startups a year in the uh, future of education space. And uh, again, that's a, that's a great move from CDP for sure. Well, uh, this is the, 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 the specific strategy of one of the uh, funds managed by CDP Venture Capital. Okay. Uh, the goal is actually to set up uh, a set of accelerator in strategic verticals. Mm -hmm. um, so it is not uh, a random selection of, of verticals, but they have, you know, this uh, set of markets where they want to uh, invest and sustain the creation of new uh, new businesses. Yeah. Um, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear. It. Perfect. Okay. Um, I, I, I had a call. No. Um, <laughs> no yeah. Uh, and in all of the in all of these accelerators, they they they, they uh, involve an international uh, lead player mm -hmm. the, uh, for the acceleration mm -hmm. uh, because they want to uh, import uh, this kind of knowledge in Italy mm -hmm. and to create a legacy. That's so in knowing how to uh, accelerate and incubate uh, startups in these in these, in these verticals. So it's a very interesting strategy here, and they are deploying uh, up to three million yeah. for each different yeah. vertical, yeah. Uh, if I'm not yeah. wrong. So it's uh, also a very good opportunity for for startups. And it's, and uh, it's if, uh, if I'm not wrong, it's international, so mm -hmm. they will welcome also startups from abroad. Oh, fantastic. So they're they're a bit trying what also like uh, you know Techstar is trying to do in the future way in the involves the international startup to come to Italy to sort of evolve the, evolve their project and uh, it's a it's a very good trend actually like uh, trying to, to to pull in like some pull in like some interesting, some, some interesting project to to Italy. Uh, <laughs> what is next after EdTech? Do you have any information about what is going to happen after? Is this the last accelerator they are going to make, or uh, there is other verticals that that uh, might be launched? 
Well, uh, I don't know. I have no ins in inside information, but I expect uh, more verticals to be launched. For example, from the list, I haven't seen anything in the broader life science sector, yeah. but I expect that something might come up from there. So we already have it. Uh, we, we already have a couple of accelerators in life science. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the one run by Fondazione Golinelli. Uh, but I ex absolutely expect CBP to do something there because I mean. Uh, we, we have a, a good market for biotech in Italy, so I expect mm -hmm. them to do something in that, in that area. We'll see. Good point. Good point. All right. Did I miss something? Anything that you found particularly interesting that I didn't mention um, since we're approaching the end of the session? Uh, well, not, not, not too much. I mean, uh, as you said, it was um, uh, a busy week, not just for investments, but also for uh, liquidity events. Mm -hmm. uh, so several startups were, were uh, acquired, well, the acquisitions were announced last week. Yeah. Uh, and an interesting one is the one uh, where Caleira mm -hmm. uh, acquired Band Bandier. Okay. Uh, okay. Calera is a, a company listed in the US. Okay. which looks to me like a, a, something similar to a small Twilio. Okay. Uh, and they added Bandiere, that's a video communication startup uh, to the portfolio, which is, I think, uh, looking at the website, a good and an excellent integration. Mm -hmm. um, and the other uh, international acquisition is the one made by Wireless Logic that acquired uh, Finx Mobile, mm -hmm. which is an IoT operator based in Milan. Uh, so international players are moving. Oh, oh. Both of these acquisitions have no uh, price, so we don't know the amount. Mm -hmm. So they, I, I always wonder uh, whether it was more of an acqui hire other than a real exit, but we'll see. And finally, the last the last news that I uh, that, that I found interesting, even though absolutely not related to startups, was the. Uh, IPO by Stevanato Group, mm -hmm. uh, which is a maker of drug containment and drug delivery solutions. Uh, they IPO'd on the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Uh, they raised more than half a billion dollars, so wow. not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. No, that's awesome. All right. Perfect. All right, so uh, we have a little bit more time. If uh, Gianluca and Johnny would like to join the conversation, guys, please uh, raise your hand. Happy to make you participate. Uh, so yeah, no, that's uh, that's definitely like a packed week. It's been like uh, a lot of movements, and uh, yeah, I mean, awesome, awesome angles. Uh, we can see maybe some. Uh, trends that are really, really consolidating, like anything impact, anything like sustainable, which is a, definitely like a, a major trend in Italy. Uh, the fintech sector, the banking sector, especially also, it's kind of, uh, I'm trying to think of, you know, transition that repeat or at least verticals that they tend to repeat consistently, consistently. So that's, uh, that's definitely like a couple of the major trends. Yeah, and the wine and spirits. Wine and spirits, of course. I mean, we're Italian, and what do you expect, of course? <laughs> All right, Nicolò, thank you very much for uh, for this session again. Uh, again, this session will be uh, available on Spotify soon. And uh, thank you guys for joining. Thank you, Nicolò, and uh, I'll see you next week. Thank you, Giacomo. It was a pleasure. See you next week. All right, thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.